Hello, BookTube. <clears throat> How are we doing today? Good. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, probably the first story Lovecraft wrote that would be considered canon for the Cthulhu Mythos, which would be Dagon. Now... <clears throat> Um, he wrote this in 1917 after a very long absence from uh, writing fiction. He was basically um, doing more journalism um, over the last 10 years um, prior to this and um, in poetry. And um, he was talked into... Um, doing a little more fiction again, and um, in 1917, I think he only wrote two short stories, um, which was this one, Dagon, and then The Tomb, <clears throat> a little bit before this one, and um, The Tomb, if we talk about that one it'll be at a later date that one is very um uh Edgar Allan Poe-ish um and we could talk about that at a later time um but this story Dagon um wasn't published until 1919 in um the literary journal, which to me just sounds like a fanzine, not a fanzine, but like a zine, um, called The Vagrant. <clears throat> and, um, a lot of people, um, like scholarly folk think that this is just like kind of, um, a precursor to what, um, Call of Cthulhu would be. And, I mean, I guess you could almost say the tomb is kind... No, you can't. It's kind of the same thing, but it's not. I was going to say it's kind of like the precursor to Statement of Randolph Carter, but I don't really think that's accurate. Um, but anyway, so um, just focusing on this... Um, I'll give you a brief rundown of the story. So the story is there's this um, unnamed narrator who um, was on a ship um, and it was around World War I. Um, the ship gets taken over by the Germans and they're all prisoners. Um, but they were very chill and laxed with everybody to the point where he was able to get a lifeboat and some supplies and just hightail it out of there. And while he's going, um, he falls asleep. And when he wakes up, the ship isn't, the lifeboat's not moving. And he like sticks his head up and looks out. And as far as he could see, it's just this like black mire. And, um, it's, as if the ground underneath the ocean popped up, um, which again, um, is a thing that happens, um, in his work, um, and in Call of Cthulhu and stuff like that. So, um, he kind of makes like a shelter out of his boat. He like tips the boat up and, um, to protect him from the sun and whatnot. And, um, all through the black mire is like bones of fish and, um, oh, what's he say? Things of lesser description or something like that. Um, it's almost like comical how he goes out of his way to use a lot of words to tell you that he's not going to describe the way something looks. And normally it's because the things he's seen, if no man can describe 
what he's seen because the geometry is that of a another um, plane of existence that humans don't understand. Of course, he wouldn't be able to describe those things, but when it's like there's a, a bone, I think um, it's of lesser blah. That's just uh, that's just funny. But um, anyway, so he waits a few days until the merc um, is hard enough to walk on and he sees this hill in the distance and he's like, I'm going to get up to that hill. And he's basically decided that this upheaval of a landmass is due to some volcanic something or another. And um, anyway, he climbs up this hill and he sees this giant monolith with like hieroglyphics on it <clears throat> and a lot of it has to do with like the ocean like sea life and everything seems to be going okay <clears throat> and then um this giant monstrosity comes out of the ocean in the distance with big giant green scaly arms and hugs the monolith and um i think i was talking about this yesterday in the video um and he's like i think this is when i went mad and he's like ah, ah, ah. like you know if you watch like um old movies like when people start to go crazy they just start laughing hysterically like even in silent movies you'll see people like you can't hear it but they'd be like like just like cracking up you know and so he's like running back laughing and just like singing songs and like um he has like he's fucked now like he's at the point of no return and he like runs back to his boat and um when he wakes up he's in a hospital bed in san francisco and um he basically has been on morphine um, for who knows how long. And um, he's writing out... This whole thing is like a confession. Um, it ends up being like almost like a suicide note. And as he's writing it, um, he's like, oh, what's that? I hear something wet and slithery at the door slumping against it oh the window that hand that hand so like we don't know like how high up he is like he could be on the first floor and then that isn't that scary but if he's on like the 15th floor and there's a big giant green hand slapping on the window that's kind of scary um but one of the things that lovecraft does um is he ends stories with um, just that one word in italics to let you know that um, M. Night Shyamalan wasn't the first one with a twist or whatnot. Um, and it does kind of get repetitive. And when we get a lot deeper into... Um, H.P. Lovecraft's work, the Cthulhu mythos, the stories he was selling to Weird Tales, um, we are going to come across Lovecraft as someone who um, is very bitter um, at the fact that he feels like he's had to step his writing down a notch in order to write to the masses that read weird tales. Farnsworth Wright would um, a lot of times reject um, Lovecraft's stories and say, like, this is too long, this is too um, wordy, this is not um, snappy enough for my readers. Um, stuff like that so um 
Lovecraft, even though he was getting paid from Weird Tales, he wasn't getting paid a lot. And um, as time went on, there were also times when Farnsworth Wright would um, tell Lovecraft that he didn't want a story because, oh, um, it's too long or it's too obscure, um, when really he just didn't have the money to pay him. But instead of telling him that he couldn't pay him, he would tell him some other thing that Lovecraft would take to heart and get all, like, upset and um, despondent with his own writing. Like, um, and then later on in life, when he was trying to... Like, there were publishers coming to him, like book publishers, wanting him to write novels. And um, he only really wrote one novel, um, although there's another one that you could, like, kind of consider. It's almost as long as a novel. But um, both of those were released as serials in the pulps. But there were publishers who wanted him to write novels. And, um, because he wasn't thrilled with how his novels had come out when he wrote them originally, which we will get to later, um, he would give them short story compilations or anthologies and they wouldn't like it. Um, and he blamed Farnsworth Wright for, um, dumbing down his work so that like no one other than a weird tale a weird tales editor would want it so it's kind of like do you bite the hand that feeds you um kind of thing but at the same time what a lot of people don't understand is that writing his own stories was kind of like um lovecraft's side job at this time he was um not at this exact moment, like within the next couple years, um, if we're going from 1917, within the next couple years, Lovecraft would basically be an editor for a lot of little publications. Um, he would edit people's stories before they sent their manuscripts out um, for publication. He would ghostwrite a lot of stuff, and we will be talking um, in this little series about the different um, stories he ghosts wrote because um, a lot of them he either would use an idea that he had already used or he would use an idea as um, almost like how Dagon might be considered the precursor to Call of Cthulhu. And to talk about that for a second, too, um, an interesting thing to note here is that Dagon, um, it even talks about it in the story, is um, a Philistine god. And it's brought up, and there's reference to Dagon in the Bible that you could look up. But um, it's interesting because, like... Every other god-like being um, that Lovecraft comes up with has some name that you can't pronounce. And um, this might have just been, like, him feeling out what kind of stuff that would be like um, and using a name that he had heard before. Um but no one knows for sure, but, um, Dagon is, like, the one anomaly, and it's just because it was right at the beginning of this whole, um, writing cycle. So, anyway, that was a lot about Dagon and a lot about Lovecraft, so... If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, be sure to leave them down below, um... Let's see, what are all the things I'm supposed to say? Give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't. And all that other stuff. 
and everyone call your mother today and let her know that she should be subscribed to my channel too. Just check in on her. So I'll see you guys later.